Okay, let's go to this Greek Hebrew interlinear app. Okay, here's the Greek P. And uh, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 58. Now, what do we read here? Well, let's skip a little bit here. Okay, we already went through the Greek, so let's go right to it. A pronoun, first person personal pronoun tagged by 147 re, and that's ego. The equivalent to this in a regular sense will be ani in Hebrew, or actually, this is equivalent to that. Okay, and uh, that's a first person personal pronoun from the obviously ego paradigm. The ego paradigm goes something like this ego mu moi me. Okay, ego mu moi me. And uh, using biblical pronunciation, biblical, uh, you know, uh, pronunciation. Okay, so uh, that's just the deal, and um, that's first person uh, singular, no, no gender. Ego is nominative, mu is genitive, moi is dative, all in the singular, and me is accusative. Okay, and you got the plural uh, forms, which are. Hemes, Hemon, Hemin, Hemas, Alpha Nu, or Alpha Sigma, as, as a matter of fact. And then you got the second person personal pronouns, Su, Su, Soi, Se, and Humes, Humon, Humin, Humas. Okay? And of course, you got the third person personal pronoun from the Altos paradigm. And you got uh, relative pronouns like Has, etc. And then you have uh, demonstrative pronouns like Hutas and Ekenas. Hutas means uh, this uh, and uh, in the singular, and then Ekenas means that. Okay? Also in the singular. So this is a first person personal pronoun, ego. Okay? It means I, spelled out epsilon, with a soft breathing marker, so it's not he, it's e. And they have the Y looking letter, which is not a Y in Biblical Greek. Okay? There is no Y in Biblical Greek. Okay? There is no SH in Biblical Greek. There is no W in Biblical Greek. There is no V in Biblical Greek. Okay? The modern Greeks have, you know, they have a V. They use the beta. That's why they pronounce it vita. And that can be a V. Okay? Like in the Hebrew word, bevakasha, you know? And then you have the omega with the graph marker. So it's not ego, it's ego. <laughs> okay. Now let's get to the nitty gritty, the I am. Actually the Amy part of this statement. Amy spelled out epsilon iota with the soft breathing marker again. So it's not hey, it's A or E. The modern Greeks will pronounce this emi. Okay. And some people pronounce it... Um, I me actually, I me for crying out loud, okay? So you got mu, yeah, epsilon iota with a soft breathing marker, and you got mu and then iota with the acute marker, okay? Acute marker. Now, the JW said that this is in this is a perfect indefinite tense. The problem with that lie is there is no perfect indefinite tense in Greek. There is uh, that sort of a deal, okay, outside of Biblical Greek, okay, in other languages. But we're not talking about other languages. We're talking about Biblical Greek. So they used, okay, um terminology from another language to actually stick it in the biblical account which is really deception okay so it's not um i have been is i am it's just this is this is right here look okay don't take my word for it let's check it out okay everybody has apps okay uh, let me see over here take that out this says, this is present, indicative, active. Active has to do with voice. Indicative has to do with the mood of reality. 
okay, projected reality, and present has to do with tense. It's not the, it's not the aorist tense. It's the present tense. It's not the perfect tense. It's the present tense. Okay, you have tenses in Greek. You have uh, the perfect tense and aorist tense, present tense, future tense, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned imperfect tense. Okay. There is no such thing as a perfect indefinite tense in Greek. Period. So they made up a tense to actually bolster up their theology or lack of it. Now, you may say to me, well, Ange, why didn't Jesus actually quote from the Greek Septuagint? Why, did, or why doesn't it say that Jesus said of himself, Ego eimi ho on, I am the being. And you have the present participle there in ha on, okay? Makes it a present participle, the, the presence, okay, of the, no pun intended, of the article ha. Okay, how on? You find that sprinkled out uh, throughout the uh, entire uh, New Testament. You see that in uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Okay. You see that also recorded in uh, John chapter 1, verse 18. Okay. You see that, you know, sprinkled all throughout the New Testament, I should say, you know. Okay, Ha'on. Now, Jesus is called Pantocrator there in uh, verse 8 of chapter 1 of Revelation. And so he's called all the titles that Jehovah's Witnesses say that Jesus is not. Well, he's called all of those titles and Ma, and it's recorded, and the scriptures cannot be broken in Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. You have like six or seven or five titles uh, for Christ there. You understand what I'm saying? Not to mention he's the great. Okay, he is the uh, Amen recorded in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. So he can't be a creature in that chapter and verse because he's called, okay, the Amen. Well, only one one being has that title, and that's the God of Israel, and that's found around verse 16 of chapter 65 of Isaiah. Now, he wasn't quoting probably from the Greek Septuagint. Now, Sometimes the apostles and Jesus himself actually quoted from the Greek Septuagint, but it looks like he did not in this particular time. What was he doing then? Well, he was probably qu quoting, okay, from the Hebrew. So he probably used the divine title, which is equal to the Tetragrammaton. It is. That's his name, Echia, and uh, Yahweh, Yahweh is his memorial name. But they're equal to each other. Like I said, J.W. knew this. Okay, they said that Jesus only spoke in the Hebrew of his day and not in Greek. And quote, they said that around 1961 or 62, like I said before. And so they popped out a pamphlet entitled "The Word Who Is uh, Who Is He," and on page uh, 36 they said that he only spoke in, in in Hebrew or not in Greek. And they pop out two Hebrew New Testaments, and in those uh, New Testaments, at least they say that uh, Jesus did not use the divine title, Ech Yeh. So to the JWs, Ech Yeh will be the coup de grace for the Trinitarian. Okay? It's equal to the Tetragrammaton. But Ted Denture said, just as easily as they, uh, you know, produced two Hebrew New Testaments that Jesus didn't say Ech Yeh of, you know, of himself. Okay? Or didn't use it for himself. Ted then just said, well, I just as easily can uh, produce uh, two Hebrew New Testaments where Jesus did say yeah, yeah, for, of himself or for himself. And that's the 1817, that's 1817, and the 1880, that's 1880 Hebrew New Testaments. And, you know, Ani, me, okay, I actually... Um, I bought one of those uh, Hebrew New Testaments where Jesus said, eh, yeah. Uh, that's the 1817 edition. You can still get it from Amazon.com. Now, let's go to the Hebrew text, okay? I should have even got out of there. I could easily go, you know. Um, well, let me see. Actually, I want to do this, though. Now, let me see if I have this uh, close by. 
Okay, uh, I want to check out a Hebrew. Okay, I hope I can do it. No, this is. Uh, I want to get it much bigger. A Hebrew uh, Bible. Okay, all right. And that's just it. I hope this is the one that I want. Okay. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Now, um, let's go to Exodus chapter 3 and verse uh, 14. Okay, let's get there. And let's check out uh, some of the Hebrew in this text, okay? Where's verse 14? Okay, let's just check this out. Well, it says over here, Why your mare, okay, and said, okay, uh, the word for said, uh, is actually uh, equal to apen, or apen is equal to this, okay, in Greek. Uh, Aleph, mem, and resh, okay, now, um, to Moses, okay, now that's Elohim over there, Elohim, actually, uh, and, and said uh, Elohim, actually, so I skipped that, I'm sorry about that, Elohim, so the Aleph, uh, Lamed, uh, He, Yod, and final Mem, that's a special M that only goes, uh, as, that's only used as the last letter of a Hebrew word, like Susim, Cherubim, Seraphim, uh, Apanim and things that you know, Echadim, you know, which means few like that. And Wa Yomer Elohim, and said God, or and God said to, and that's El, and I, that's that's equal or process equal to this, because remember the Hebrew came first. Even though this is not Hebrew, this is Aramaic script, a borrowed by uh, from the Babylonians. Um, during that captivity and after their captivity, you know, into Babylon, the, the Hebrews uh, uh, borrow uh, this uh, sort of script. Paleo Hebrew is Hebrew. Okay, this is not Paleo Hebrew. Okay, so where is 14? Where did it go? Okay, wait for a second, guys. I am using a magnifying glass because I am legally blind, so I'm sorry that I'm slow. Wa Yomer Elohim El Moshe. El means to Moshe. Moshe is spelled out M S H, okay, or M O S H E, and then the H is silent though, okay. Mem, uh, Sheen, uh, Hey, like that, okay. And then it goes on to say Ech Yeh, Asher Ech Yeh, okay. Now, this is the key. This is the deal. Echyech is in, according to verse 15 of this chapter, is his name. Yahweh is his memorial name. Okay, so stress the R. Okay. So they're equal to each other. Echyech is equal to the Tetragrammaton. It's not less, it's not greater. They're equal to each other, and JWs knew this, okay? Now, obviously Jesus wasn't quoting from the Greek Septuagint because he would have said, ego emi ho'on, but if he was speaking in Hebrew, and, and if he quoted from this, well, this is, will be even more astonishing that he said uh, this, because nobody can dare say that, okay? Use that for himself except for Yahweh. No one. Do you agree? If Jesus said, Ech yech, okay, and that's all he needed to say, he didn't need to say, Ech yech, asher, ech yech, I am that I am. Now, that's a special I am. Ech yech is a special I am reserved only for the living God of Israel. Ani is reserved for people like you and me. Okay? You know, Ani Angelo. I am Angelo. You could say Ani. Uh, the blind man said Ani who? You understand what I'm saying? In, uh, in chapter 9 of uh, John's Gospel. But ech, yeah. And sometimes we, we say ech, yeah, as English speaking people, you know, because of the H at the end, which is silent. But, you know, sometimes we pronounce that, but it shouldn't be pronounced. You understand what I'm saying? 
Echyech is spelled out, okay, the divine name that's equal to the Tatarramatan. It's spelled out Aleph, okay, with the Segol, E class, that's E like an actor or met or uh, get, you know. And then you have the He, okay, and then the Schwa, so that's one syllable. The Schwa underneath the second letter, remember you, re you read Hebrew from right to left, makes it one syllable, okay. Ech. And then the second syllable is ye. Let's see if I could blow up the print a little bit, okay? And I can. Let's check this out, okay? Let's look at the diacritics a little bit more carefully. Let's make sure. Aleph is there with the segol. Upside down uh, uh, triangle set of dots, okay? That's an E class. Like in the word get. Don't make Hebrew so, so difficult to read, okay? These dots and dashes and strokes, for the most part... Okay, our vowels. Okay, some of them double the letter. Okay, one of the dots, I should say, double uh, du can double a letter. One of the dots can harden a letter. Okay, you understand what I mean? And that's just it. Now, so, so that's it. And then the hey is um, is the second letter here, and then it's a schwa underneath it. You don't pronounce a schwa. You just pronounce the H sound. So that's ech. And then the second syllable consists of uh, a Y, that's yod. And then segol, again. It's a cluster of grapes, someone said, right? Okay, so that ye, that's ye. Second syllable is ye. And then there's another hey, but that's not pronounced, just like in the Tetragrammaton. Okay? Now, just like this, the Tetragrammaton has two hey's, okay, two H's. The thing with the tetragrammaton, it means hand behold, nail behold. That's the story of Jesus. Jesus' crucifixion. So the tetragrammaton has to do with Jesus' crucifixion and death. Okay? That's a prophecy in the tetragrammaton. Well, the tetragrammaton is the third person form of haya, which means to be or um, uh, became, whatever the case may be. So it's like a blend of Ain and Agenita, okay? You understand? It's like, a, it's like a blend of that. You have to look at the context, okay? I mean, Agenita is Agenita in Greek. It doesn't mean uh, was. And was is was in Greek, okay? Ain. It doesn't mean Agenita. It doesn't mean to become. But in Hebrew, it has that semantic pool, okay? Now, what is Asher? Well, a share can be translated, and where is it? Okay, I just lost it. Okay, that's Echyak right there. Okay, that's the deal. Uh, Echyak, okay. A share, you can say that. That spells out hey. Okay, uh, where's a share, though? Where's a share? Where's a share, though? Echy, okay. Aleph, okay, and that's. You know, increase that. That's Aleph with the patach, uh, uh, with the patach there, okay? Hatef patach right there. And then you have the sheen, the SH in Hebrew. You can tell by the upper uh, dot over the upper right hand corner, okay? When that happens, that's a sheen, like I said before. Okay, when the dot is to the upper left-hand side, that's an S, like in the word for uh, skin, basar, or flesh. Well, this is uh, SH, like in Moshe's name, okay? Okay, and then you have the go underneath it. It's a triangle, upside-down triangle, a set of dots, okay, so fine, SH. Okay, and then you have the R in Hebrew, like in the word basar, or like in the word... Um, uh, what's another one uh, uh, that has an R? Man, that's that's that's, that's, that's good. That's a uh, dabar, actually, a word. Okay, you guys put me in the spot. Behreshit haya hadabar, wa hadabar haya im ha Elohim, wa Elohim or va Elohim really doesn't make a difference to me. Haya hadabar. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, right straight from the 1817 Hebrew New Testament. God gets the glory, not me. And then it ends up to say Echyak uh, again. Okay? And uh, it says, Wayomar, uh, Wayomar. 
And then it goes on to say, okay, uh, let me see, uh, Yisrael, uh, Yech, uh, Shalachani has sent, okay, so, so that's just it, has sent me, Shalachani, so thou she, Lamed, Chet, and uh, Nun, and, and Yod, acting like a vowel over there, okay? And it goes on to say, uh, and uh, said, okay, uh, God, and God said, okay, to Moshe, El Moshe, again. It's like uh, uh, Panim El Panim, face to face, right? To El, uh, to Moses. And then, uh, and then it says, uh, uh, to the sons, El Bene to the sons of Israel, Israel. Okay, Yahweh. Okay, and what does it say over here? Yahweh. Okay, and okay. Uh, ui, the mosquito bit me, guys. My goodness, it's like Dracula for crying out loud. Hello, hey, Abraham. Hello, hey. Okay, uh, let me see. Does it say Abraham here? Okay, it doesn't say Abraham. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, is it, yeah, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, and then Elohe Yaakov. Okay, and that's just the deal, and, uh, and he's going to say that this is his Shem. Okay. It says, uh, Shemi. Okay. Uh, Olam is here. Okay. Olam. You see Olam here. And then, um, and that's just, and it says, uh, nations there. Okay. Door, okay. From uh, uh, it says uh, it says uh, nation. Uh, door, and that's just the deal. It says over here. Well, if Jesus was quoting from this, hi, honey, is that you? Yes, my daddy. Okay, <laughs> okay. If Jesus was quoting from from this text, okay, in Hebrew, well, it's much more stronger than just quoting, you know, ego, eimi, or on. As great as that is, it doesn't eclipse, okay, the Hebrew. I mean, uh, you know, ego, eimi, you know, ego, eimi, or on. I mean, you know, that that's that's great. But if he said this, which I think he did, that's why it doesn't say ego, eimi, or on. Ego, eimi, or on in John chapter eight, verse uh, fifty-eight. If he was quoting from this, while well, this is nature, okay, that's just the deal. So this is a full Greek, uh, full Greek construction of uh, John chapter eight, verse fifty-eight, and throw in a little bit of Hebrew there and here and there. And you can see what Ted Denture said about uh, the two Hebrew New Testaments, where Jesus did say "Echiak" uh, for himself, recorded in eighteen seventeen and eighteen eighty. The 1817 edition was translated from the Textus, uh, Textus Receptus, which is a nice text, guys. It's not a bad text, it's a good text. And uh, it was translated uh, by G.G. Collier, C-O-L-L-Y-E-R-N-T, Frey, that's F-R-E-Y, way back again in 1817. And you can still get a copy of it from Amazon.com. Okay, so we saw the full Greek construction of John chapter 8, verse 58. We did see that he called himself of uh, the great I am, okay? And if he was using the Hebrew, it would have been even greater uh, than, um, than what's just mentioned in our Greek, okay, additions. Echiach is his name. Yahweh is his memorial name. His angel of union is given glory to the God of Israel. God is not the God of the Necron or the mood of of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words, and they're alive now. 
And outside of that, it means that uh, <laughs> the, the book entitled Millions Now Living Will Never uh, Die, incidentally, they're all dead, and they're, not, they're hanging by a thread. Well, it's just a hoax, guys. It just was an excuse to build a mansion for himself, meaning for Rutherford. Okay? And he died of cancer in that mansion in 1941. Actually, in 1943, just a couple of years later, because the, the witnesses never quit lying, even after people dropped dead, uh, okay, they said that nobody was going to go to the moon in 1943 in a, in a book entitled The Truth Shall Set You Free. But the problem with that is that uh, 24 people went to the moon. And nobody was going to go to space. That's included in the false prophecy. And Captain Kirk of the Starship Enterprise went to, went to outer space, guys. You can't make it up. He went even more than you, you, you're you required to go. 328,000, I think, is the requirement. You know, 328,000 miles. But he went, I think, uh, what, 366,000 miles. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Captain Kirk did. He went to space. Breaking that false prophecy that was recorded in 1943. And the false prophecies of the Watchtower can't be broken. Thank you. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up, okay? And uh, give me a comment under the video there on the comment section. And uh, please hit that, that bell notification. And also, um, uh, please subscribe to my, ta uh, to my channel and share it with your friends, uh, family, and uh, coworkers, okay? So uh, share these videos. Do what you want with them. Uh, they're not copyrighted. They're not protected. Share them. Uh, upload them on your uh, own uh, YouTube uh, channel. It doesn't make a difference to me. Okay, the truth has to be said about these dear witnesses that are on their way to hell, fire and Dacha, if they don't have the right Jesus in their lives. Remember what First uh, Second Corinthians chapter eleven says: that as a false uh, okay, uh, Jesus, and as a true. And so you have to be very careful with that, guys. Okay. Incidentally, it says there's uh, there's uh, 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 there's uh, a true gospel and a false, Galatians chapter 1. Okay? And uh, there's, there, there's the true spirit of God and the false spirit of God, which is actually the spirit of Antichrist. Make sure that, that you and your families are not in the pool, okay, of the second, of the Antichrist, okay? Just make sure that you stand, you're standing for Christ and you're making the truth known to the world. Thank you, guys.